So remember our hash, basically all we have is an array and we're adding elements to the array. And the problem is that as we add elements to specific places in the array, the array starts filling up. And so what we'd like to do is that each position in the array have a data structure that we can use that could accommodate an endless amount of data. And so which data structure should we use for that? It's one you've already used before. We can use our linked list. So the idea with chaining is that we build an array like this, and in every position, we build a linked list. So every position, we have head nodes. Now, I take some data, and I take my data, I call the hash code function, I get the integer back from that. I make that integer positive. And I mod that integer on the table size. Okay. That gives me a place in my table where I'm going to add A. I go to that table cell. I get the head node of the linked list, and I call linked list dot add first. Okay, I want a constant time way of adding to my linked list. So if I just call the add first method, in fact, all I need is an add method, then I get a constant time addition to my linked list. Now I've got element B, I do the same thing. I take my hash code, I make it positive, I mod it on the table size. I go to my array of linked lists, I find my head node, I add my element B. I just call the add method. What happens is, is as I start adding elements, my chains start growing. So if I add things, my linked lists start getting occupied. But if I add something to a space where there's already an element, it doesn't matter. I just add it to the linked list. And so I can keep growing my linked lists by just calling the add method. I now have a data structure that provides constant time add, remove, and find of any element, it has unlimited size, within the memory limitation of my computer, because I can just keep adding to my linked lists as they fill up. And it also doesn't need resizing as frequently as just, for example, a basic array. Because it doesn't matter if I have collisions. I can grow my data structure larger than just the size of my table. So we saw load factor when we looked at um, linear probing, quadratic probing, double hashing. Our load factor was just the number of entries in the table divided by the table size. For uh, Chained hash, a load factor lambda, is the number of entries, just like it was for our 
other data structures, divided by the number of possible chains. In other words, the number of elements we have in our array of chains. And so, as our data structure starts growing, as we've shown here, as we start adding things, it's quite possible for lambda to match to be one, to match the number of chains, or for lambda to be larger, to be two or three or 10 or even higher. We can add a lot more things to our data structure than um, we have elements for. This is the best data structure ever invented. You should use this all the time. But chain hashes, of course, can go horribly wrong. So if I have a chain hash, I'm not going to redraw my whole hash. I'm just going to empty it. If I have a chain hash and I add an entry, let's say I get my hash code, I make it positive, I mod it on the table size, and it tells me to put it in this particular chain. And now I'm adding something, and I get the same potential chain. I add something, I get the same potential chain. I add something, I get the same potential chain. I add something, I get the same potential chain. When I'm adding things, I've now converted my hash basically into just a standard linked list. And so the complexity now of, for example, finding things or removing things from this hash goes from constant time to big O of N. Because now what I do is I say, okay, I'm trying to find something in my hash. Here's the entry where it needs to be. Now I have to look through the entire chain to find something. So the worst case for chaining, the worst case is we're going to be big O of N. We'd run the risk of being big O of N if our hash code returns the same number every time. If our hash code returns different number every time, then we get our best case for chaining, which is that Every time we add something, it goes in a different bucket. And now our time for finding things, for removing things, is constant time. So the chained hash is one of the ro most robust and widely used data structures. It's the basis of, for example, the dictionary in Python. It's um, in Java, there's API commands that allow you to build hashes free easily. And it's exactly, for example, in Perl, how they also build their associative arrays, their hashes. It's robust because provided your hash code gives you a relatively even distribution of numbers, you can add unlimited data you can add things, find things, and remove things with constant time. Remember when we looked at different um, functions associated with data structures, there are things like size, is empty, is full, that are always constant time. There are um, functions like add, remove, and find, which depending on how we do them, they can change the complexity. And then there are functions like getting the keys and getting the values where um, they're big O of N functions regardless of how we implement them. <laughs>